the next speaker. Um, I hope I pronounce this rightly, Mr. Sylvian Bouquin from um, Transport Canada, who is not only an expert on regulation, but also actually a commercial pilot himself, as well as a drone pilot. So yeah, it couldn't be better um, fit for this, um, for this uh, seminar, of course. I will not talk longer, so I would like to um, invite you to the floor, uh, Sylvian. Sylvian, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the presentation I prepare is mainly about the regulation actually in place in Canada uh, about the remotely piloted aircraft. It, it's not specific to uh, to airship, but you know, uh, for now. So we'll I will go in for in much detail, but for now the regulation it's more covering the uh, below or the up to 25 kg uh, uh, remotely piloted aircrafts. And above 25 kg, it's possible, or kilogram, it's possible, but under a CFOC aircraft. So this is like a summary of my presentation. So, uh, my, so my name is Sylvain Bork. I'm a civil aviation inspector. And I, I will be, uh, later, I will be uh, presenting, uh, I, will, uh, I will be helped by Carlos Riella. Uh, who will help me to answer any question because because I'm a pilot so I don't have uh, the engineering background so since he's an engineering he's so is hi Carlos <laughs> thank you okay so so uh, I'm working for the past task force for uh, within the flight operation team and uh, Carlos is within the uh, the engineering team. Uh, uh, of the Airpass Task Force as well. So um, I'm an advanced uh, pilot with a flight reviewer rating, also commercial uh, pilot, and also a glider instructor. I've, uh, before being with TC, I was a, uh, a national drone chief pilot for CBC Radio Canada, and I've uh, made a lot of uh, operations. So I have a lot of operation on small RPAs. So the, for this presentation, we'll cover a CARS Part 9 regulation that it's actually enforced for micro RPA. For small RPA, which is 250 grams up to 25 ki kilograms. And, for, and also where I'm going to share uh, what we are actually working on, it's the uh, low risk BV loss operation uh, up to 150 kilograms. And after that, we'll have a regulatory, uh, sorry, we have a question for you. So part nine uh, of the CARS, uh, sorry, CARS part nine is in force since June, 2019. And in part nine, a drone or in CARS, drone is a remotely pilot, is named a remotely piloted aircraft. So our RPA is a net, so this is car definition. So it's a navigable aircraft other than a balloon of a rocket or a kite that is operated by a pilot who is not on board. So when you fly a drone, even if it's a small drone, you're a pilot of an aircraft and regulation applies. So the, the RPA plus the control station is called the remotely piloted aircraft system or air pass. So there are three, let's say, Three, as a summary, there's three RPA weight categories covered under CARS Part 9. So one, the below 250 grams, which is called, we, we call it the micro RPA. Small RPA is 250 grams up to 25 kilograms. And there's two operational operation category, the basic and advanced operation. And I would say three, which is the above 25 kg. That is not, uh, there's not, there's no specific regulation on this category, weight category, but you can operate them under a S SFOC, which is a special flight operation certificate. So CARS doesn't apply to RPA operated indoors or underground. So, and like I said, we're working on a regulatory development uh, process uh, for low risk BV loss and uh, V loss and BV loss up to 150 kg. So, quickly, so for small RPA, which is uh, 250 grams up to 25 kilograms, there's basic operation, which mainly is when you're flying your 
RPA more than 100 feet or 30 meters, 30 meters from other people, or flying in in uncontrolled airspace, and also more than three nautical miles from airports, and one more than one nautical mile from heliports. So, in Canada, aerodromes, which is more of the, where, where is most of the uh, the aerodromes? So these. Uh, so these are not, you, so the uh, basic operation, you can fly close to uh, aerodromes, but not from airports, which are aerodromes holding a, a certification. So for advanced operation, it's when you need, when you can fly less than 30 meter or 100 feet from people or over other people. It's when you can fly in control airspace or less than three nautical miles from airports, one less than one nautical mile from heliports. So we developed some, some tools uh, to know, so for the, the, the small uh, RPA uh, pilots to know where they're flying, if it is control or uncontrolled airspace. There's the drone site selection tool, which is hosted by NRC, and also the nav drone viewer, which is a interactive map. So drone, so sorry, RP pilots can uh, have a nav drone account, which is used for to uh, to provide uh, or to send a, a, a control a airspace a request to fly in control airspace, and you receive your authorization. So most of the uh, airspace, uh, most of the uh, control airspace authorization are given automatically when they're, let's say, away from airports and are in low risk environment. So it's like quick, instantly, you, re you receive it in instantly. Okay, can I fly above 400 feet? So it's a question we often hear, uh, listen, uh, sorry, often receive. Can I fly above 400 feet AGL over an infrastructure? And the answer in, is yes, since in our regulation, it's permitted to fly legally 100 feet over a structure and 200 feet uh, uh, horizontally on each side. So this is possible, let's say over a CN tower, over a, let's say over a, a transmission tower, like a TV transmission uh, tower or even a power line. So that, that may give you uh, some ideas in the future for the, uh, let's say, BV loss operation, that if they're 100 feet and below an infrastructure, they're, they're in a, they're respecting car part nine. That's it. Okay, so keep in mind that other rules may apply. Because why I'm saying that, it's because we often receive some question about privacy, hey, there's somebody uh, using my a drone to film inside my house. Uh, uh, can you do something about it? Yeah, it's, it's not TC, so we're regulating the airspace, but not how people are using the aircraft. So same for, uh, there may be also other federal, provincial, or municipal legislation that could apply. Like uh, in Park Canada, uh, there are some rules that limits the use of drone in national parks and same uh, in provincial and municipal and some provincial and municipal parks. So also check the limit on the wildlife because like if there's a species act or marine, marine mammal regulation that also applies to uh, RPA since they are aircrafts. So <laughs> That, that's it for the, uh, the small RPA regulation. So as a summary, so, uh, so all our craft, in, our craft including, including our, all our RPAs need to stay away from restricted airspace. No time, if there's a no time, a forest fire, so five not come out forest fire, uh, away from an emergency situation. Small RPA needs to be registered kept in VLOS and up to, or up to 400 feet or below 400 feet for sure. So 250 grams and above, so even the above 225 kilogram drones 
our RPA needs to need to be marked, need to and the pilot need to hold a RPA pilot certificate. So the the aircraft needs to be uh, more than three nautical miles from a, from a mil. So all RPA needs to, to stay more than three nautical miles from a military air grounds, or away from special aviation events or advertised events. This could be permitted, these three could be permitted under a spe special flight operating certificate. So, so for, for, for basic operation, uh, these pilots need to stay away from control airspace. More than three not call from airports and military aerodromes, and more than one nautical mile from heliports. They need also to stay more than 100 feet away from other person. So there's also other regulation in place, but these are the, let's say, the, the key elements of the basic operation if we compare to advanced operation. So for advanced operation, the pilot needs to have an advanced pilot certificate. He can, he can fly in all airspace. When I say all, it's not the restricted airspace or not the one that I wrote in the first line. So they can fly in uncontrolled and controlled airspace with NAV Canada, NAV drone authorization. They, but they also need to have the right RPA, what, which stands for they need to comply, the RPA, the aircraft needs to comply with the standard 922, which is a standard for safety assurance declaration. If they wanna fly in controlled airspace, so these are three different standards. One is for control airspace near people, which is less than 100 feet, but up to 16 feet or five meters. Or the third one is over, if you wanna fly over people, there's a third safety assurance declaration with a standard. Uh, if you wanna fly less or over, less than uh, three, uh, five meters or 16 feet from people or over people. So, now there's some numbers that it's interesting. So since the implementation of part nine uh, last in, in uh, June, 2019, so 63, we have more than 68,000 small RPAs that are registered. So this is, and the micro RPA, which is below 250 grams, this, like the Mavic Minis, they don't need to be registered. So the Mavic Minis are not part of these uh, small RPAs that are registered. 68,000, if we, if, uh, so in 2020, there were over 33,000 traditional aircraft registered in Canada. So these are airplanes, helicopter, gliders, balloons. So the, there, there's a lot of our small RPAs out there. So the, we, have, we, have, we, have a, um, we have, we are passing the RPAs, the, 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 the RPA exam online. It's possible to, pa to, pa to, to, to pass the RPA exam online. So, and now uh, up, up, up to now, so there was 143,000 exam, 63, almost 70,000 basic pilot certificate were issued more than 7,700 7, advanced pilot certificates were issued. There's 762 flight reviewers out there uh, affiliated with school that are passing are make, passing the flight reviews to the pilot or asking for a advanced pilot certificate. And there's 50, 15 law enforcement agents, agency who made a partnership with TC to enforce part nine or to give a ticket. <laughs> so if you're above 25 kJ or willing to fly uh, near a in advertised event or less than three nautical, nautical mile of a, uh, a, a sorry, BNB aerodrome, uh, you need to ask for a SFOCR pass. There's nine reasons to ask uh, uh, for SFOC. You cannot ask uh, for SFOC to bypass uh, part nine regulation. It's only for specific uh, reason. So uh, 
I'm, I will talk mainly about low risk BB loss and about 25 kilogram operation, since I think it's more that kind of uh, operation that airship people will look for. So uh, basically it's for uncontrolled airspace and isolated areas, and also for atypical airspace and also isolated area. So, we'll, so the definition of atypical, atypical airspace can be found in the air uh, AC 903001 as any of the it's any of the following. So it's a restricted airspace. Atypical is airspace. It's a restricted airspace with the permission, and northern domestic airspace outside of an airport environment or below 400 feet or within 100 feet or less and uh, 200 feet laterally of a building or a structure like I explained a few slides ago in the uncontrolled space and outside of an airport environment. And like I said, airport environment, it's not outside of an aerodrome environment. It's outside of airport environment. So it's all based, so everything is based on the air pass operational risk assessment. This is this came, this came from JARIS, which is a joint authority of re regulator. I sorry, I don't remember the rest of the name, but you know, it's uh, this process was is based on a JARIS model, and uh, we adjust it to the Canadian uh, situation. And uh, so this is the foundation to allow BV loss and above 25 kilogram uh, SFOC. So uh, but the guidance material is found in the Aviation Circular 903001 that is available on our website. So we came out with standard scenario with specific for, for the aura, specific for above 25 kg, BV loss and above 400 feet AGL. They're, they are available in a draft appendix D of the AC 903001. Now this draft is available. It's not available on our website. It's a, it's a draft, but at the end of this presentation, you will have our email address and you can ask for it. So the risk burritos was published in 20. Uh, so there's a, we're working on the next regulation, which is a low risk BV lush regulation. And uh, that covers up to, so it, it was published or announced in, uh, in, in the CARAC in April, 2020 as a notice of proposal, a proposed abandon. Name is NPA 2020-012. And it's on our past low risk. Uh, low risk. So we after this uh, announcement, we received 230 stakeholder submission that we, uh, uh, that the, so that in the 60 days uh, common period. So, and now we're working on finalizing the regulatory package. So the, uh, so uh, if you go in the CARAC NPA 2020-12, you will see on the right, you will see other documents that you, that are listed on the right of my screen. Uh, if you wanna know more about what's coming. So the, regula the regulatory package uh, will be announced in Canadian Gazette Part 1 in the end of this fiscal year. So we're looking at the end of 2022, but we're not controlling the issuance date. And Part 2, usually it's one year after the, the CG1 is published. So Amongst others, so the NPA is covering BB loss operation uh, level rating on for the pilots. Uh, it's a rating on the advanced pilot certificate. It will also cover a medical requirement using a self declaration. It looks like a, 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 the, a, a the, uh, actual uh, class four uh, medical certificate uh, declaration, but needs to be endorsed by a physician. Uh, actually, just to share that, you know, the for the small RTA pilots, they don't need to have a medical. There's no medical requirement, but there will be for the uh, uh, above 25 kg and BVLS. So there will be also a, a, a rock IRPAS operator certificate, similar to the traditional uh, AOC, uh, and scaled down for low risk 
our past BV loss operation. There will also be a, 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 an, a, an a, a update on the standard 922 for manufacturer safety assurance declaration and declaration plus for, I would say, higher risk, higher uh, weight uh, RPAs. So also there will be information on uh, our, our requirements for the DAA system, which is detect and avoid, which is the basic of the BV loss operation. If you don't have a DAA system, sorry, you cannot do BV loss outside atypical airspace. So these two tables are on the left, it's the low risk BV loss operation. On the right, it's the V loss operation. And now our scope is working on up to 150 kJ. So no worries. This is like for if you have an airplane license, you can take off with your license and it's exactly the same thing. So if you could fly a what, up to 150 kilogram RPA with a cert with your pilot certificate with the uh, with the uh, complex uh, pilot uh, rating, and if you're uh, filling up the regulation or the requirements of the regulation, so you can do it without asking for a SFOC. If not, if let's say you're 200 kilogram remotely piloted aircraft, no worries you can still fly with a SFOC and with a risk assessment. So uh, low risk BV loss regulation is developed with, uh, with international collaboration with other civil aviation authorities, including the ICAO RPAS panel. We have representation, we're part of the ICAO RPAS panel. And also we, are, we have a leadership at JRS uh, and the representation by our, by our one of our so one of our uh, engineer folks. So we also have engagement with other aviation authority, which includes the uh, United States, Europe, and uh, so I'm all, I'm almost finished. So and uh, so and to help the, to to uh, to set up these requirements, also we're working uh, closely with the uh, ICAO, RTCA, ASTM, and JARIS. For more information, so you can come, you can look at our drone safety website. And uh, that's, that's it. So uh, Carlos is, uh, is there with me to answer any of the uh, engineer specific questions. And thank you very much. Thank you, um, Sylvain. That was an excellent uh, presentation and a very good and detailed overview. Um, um, I uh, get a message from Barry that we have not much time. That's really a Caught up, so um, I would like to thank you. But um, let's see if there are some questions. 